afternoon. I hope everybody had a great day here at High Hopes. Um, today's meeting, we are going to review evidence in the form of research-based high-performance descriptors for essential element number one. And before we get started, Shelley, would you mind going over our collective commitment? Sure. So we have our six collective commitments that we've developed together. And just as a reminder, number one is to be an active <clears throat> participant. Two, take responsibility for new learning. Three, respect our time schedule. Four, consider all perspectives. Five, be open to new ideas and strategies. And six, to silence our devices and set them aside. Thank you, Shelley, for reviewing our norms. And I was just gonna take a second to go over um, our team roles, just as a reminder. Today I'll be the facilitator. And Shauna is the resource manager. Thank you for reserving the room, getting the folder packets ready, and all that, um, all those other things that you do. Shelley is going to be our process observer and provide feedback on how well we um, adhere to our norms or collective commitments. And Robin is our summarizer, which will help us transition from one step to another. And Megan is going to be the recorder today. And, um, so your job, as you know, is just to take notes and, and complete a summary log later for the rest of our, our school staff. And Kelly, of course, can't forget Kelly, she's gonna be our timekeeper over there. And um, just a reminder that our roles will rotate monthly. Does anybody have any questions or concerns um, as we begin the process today? No. No, no. Oh, awesome, okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the purpose of our first step is just to develop a common understanding of essential element one, academic performance and curriculum. So if you wouldn't mind, um, if you don't already have uh, that paperwork out for essential element one, it's in the orange folder that Shana provided. Um, and what we're gonna do is just take approximately 10 minutes or so and silently by ourselves read through the document just so we can all gain a common understanding of what um, these high performance descript descriptors look like at high performing schools. Um, when the timer goes off, then we're gonna ask that we, we just go around um, the tables and share out uh, what kind of resonated with you or something um, that you feel you wanna share. Does anybody have any questions before we start? Okay, so would you mind sending the timer for 10 Not minutes? Not at all. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Um, okay, so at this time we're gonna go ahead and review, go around the table and what resonated with us as we read about curriculum at high performing schools. Just as a reminder, you have two minutes or less. Um, at this time we're not gonna discuss how our school measures up to what we were reading and we're not gonna engage in any back and forth discussion at this time. And um, if you don't mind, if you could try not to restate just for time purposes, restate what um, anybody else has already shared. Would you like to start? Sure. Okay. Um, so what I noticed was that the curriculum in high performing schools has to be culturally responsive. And um, that also that the district must take steps to ensure there's a process in place that so that we can eliminate unintentional gaps or overlaps in the curriculum um, and I found it really interesting that high-performing schools, um, school boards actually have a policy in place that helps ensure that those curricular gaps are addressed. I noticed high-performing schools have a challenging curriculum that's available to all students and includes opportunities mm -hmm. for developing those higher order thinking and problem solving skills. I also noticed they have high expectations and meet the learning needs of all students. And the curriculum also provides learning opportunities outside the school campus that addresses student interests and diversity. And what caught my attention was the fact that the high performing schools focus on the state standards. Um, but the curriculum has to connect um, the content areas. And in order to do that, both horizontally and vertically, you have to have conversation, dialogue between teachers in the same building as well as teachers across the district in feeder schools. Yeah, mine goes along with that. Um, high performing schools, they have district curriculum committees 
and um, they re meet regularly so that they can really look at multiple indicators of student progress, not just academic <clears throat> performance. Um, and then they really use that information to analyze student performance, and um, it's important that they use that to drive and make data-based decisions. So I thought that that was um, very interesting. Also, collaboration is such an important part of the process at high-performing schools, um, especially when you're thinking about implementing something new, monitoring, evaluating it, and revising it aligned to the curriculum. And not just at the school level, but throughout the district level, too. Um, one thing that I noticed was the communication piece, that the curriculum standards and expectations is communicated to all students in all content areas and that there's opportunities for that authentic application of critical thinking and problem solving skills and it meets the needs of all students. So, awesome. And really what um, I think for me stuck out was that it is the responsibility of the district to provide support to make sure um, that the Oklahoma academic standards are addressed by the curriculum within and across all content areas and then I also had highlighted um, that districts should um, have personnel designated um, formally and have discussions on horizontal and vertical alignments. So that's kind of what resonated with me. Okay, so thank you all for sharing those important points that you learned from the research. And Robin, um, do you have a brief summary of what was shared? I do. Um, I wrote down several things that we each mentioned about high-performing schools. Um, one of it was that we observed that there was a challenging research-based curriculum that was fully aligned with the Oklahoma academic standards, um, horizontally and vertically, vertically across all of the content areas. Um, and then curriculum should be age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate and culturally relevant. I think that was one that we all could agree with. Mm -hmm. And in, in addition, collaboration, uh, communication, and the involvement of stakeholders at each site and the district level must contribute. And um, there should be a formal, systematic approach um, to really make those data-informed decisions about curriculum. Was there anything that I might have missed that I might need to record? Okay, thanks. So. Good job, guys. Well, great job, everyone, contributing really important points um, without repeating what someone else has said. And um, I was really impressed how well you all um, adhered to our collaborative commitments and helped us stay on time so that we can continue to move forward with our meeting. Great job.